Okay. Hi, everyone. This is Cecilia Nelson Hurt here, known as Creative Sessie or Sessie Knits the World. If you follow me, I hope that you do. I could not be more excited to, to be a part of this incredible collaboration between Amy of La Bien Ami and Jared Flood of Brooklyn Tweed. So I am wearing uh, my finished project. I, I finished it this morning in their new yarn, Imbu. Uh, and this is their launch of the knit along collaboration, all things colorful, all things around the world from New York to Paris. I'm feeling very uh, transcontinental, I guess I, I would say. <laughs> um, so would love to, you know, let's let, let's jump right in in case I can't imagine that anybody doesn't know who both of you are. But just in case, let's do a little bit of an introduction. Let's start with Amy. Hi, Amy. Hi, Cecilia. Thanks for joining us for this. This is going to be super fun. Um, my name is Amy. Um, you can call me Aimé. My brand is called La Bien Aimé. And I um, am from the United States. I was born in Kansas, but I live in Paris now. And I started my yarn brand here in France about eight years ago. Um, the reason why I started my yarn company was because I was looking for some kind of yarn, hand dyed yarn, and I wasn't finding it. And so I thought maybe I could make this happen. And that's kind of the idea that sparked La Bien Aimé. At the time I owned a cafe and I wanted to have my own yarn in my cafe to sell. And I didn't know that they was going to come to this eight years later. You know, I thought I was just going to be selling a little basket of La Bien Aimé in my cafe. <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> so yeah, so that's me. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And and the rest, as they say, is yarn knitting global uh, the, the history, which is just so incredible. Um, Jared, Brooklyn Tweed, let's, let's get to know yeah. you. Hi, I'm Jared Flood. I founded Brooklyn Tweed Yarn Company. We are in our 13th year this year. Crazy. Um, and sort of like Amy started in with very small exploratory um intentions and definitely never you know expected that we'd be sitting here um where we are so yeah i started my blog in new york in 2005 i blogged for five years before starting the company officially as a yarn company um of the same name my blog was called brooklyn tweed as well and i was a knitter kind of burgeoning young designer in new york starting my career and uh, a hand spinner as well and that's kind of what got me on the yarn train of, of just always finding it really fascinating the physics of yarn and have loved fiber and color and texture since i was just a little kid my my mother's a a master crafter i grew up in a house full of knitting and quilting and handmade clothes and so I feel like a little bit of an outlier in that sense that I was just like right in the soup from the beginning <laughs> and all of those things felt really um, natural to me. I'm the youngest of three boys and I'm the only son who had like all those sparks firing from day one so my mom just like <laughs> <laughs> nurture, nurture. She just jumped right on that, nurtured that from day one. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and it's been really special for us to now because my mom is just a, such a huge uh, fan, and and she's we we say, and, and it's for real. It's not an exaggeration that my mom has knit more Brooklyn tweed than anyone in the world. I believe. I love um, that. And she's and she's kept every yarn label. <laughs> she has been basket of of yarn labels it's it's really sweet so yeah that's, that's kind of a super quick origin story i love that origin <laughs> story but now i'm intrigued and i want to see the basket of labels so we're gonna have to make that i'm happy okay. as well so yeah. i clearly remember when i met met both of you so again i've been a crafter for over 20 years and had the pleasure to meet both of you mm -hmm. um big fans, was a fan of your blog, but I'm so interested, um, as they say, tell me a little bit about your meet cute. How, how did you two meet? <laughs> uh, well, we met digitally, right? Yeah. Um, I, I think we were, we were both blogging, um, but I think we met more so on Flickr, yes. which is no longer, I believe, right? I, it uh, still exists. You know, I still back my photos up to Flickr. I still yeah. pay for my Flickr <laughs> account because I just, it was such a important, you know, like website app for me. 
yeah um back in the day so i still hang on Flickr still exists <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it was. It felt like a pre pre Instagram community where you're was, really just engaging yeah. with um, the imagery more so the imagery than the text and text too. But uh, yeah, and we we really got to know each other through our pictures, and we both yeah. love taking pictures and have always you know been that's been a big part of it. I think for both of us. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I did read Jared's blog, Brooklyn Tweed, because I wasn't. <clears throat> kind of a knit blogger. I started out as an expat blogger when I moved to France. That's ex I opened my blog like six months before I moved to France and started out as an expat blogger, Was got back into knitting. And that's how I found Jared's blog. And through his photography, I was, I was on Flickr because I was an amateur photographer at the time and just really trying to learn as much as I could by um, other people's blogging and I found Jared that way immediately and we immediately connected through photography and mm -hmm. it's so funny because I remember at one point where I was knitting my son had just been born and I was knitting some sweaters for him and you would come and comment on some of the photos and it was just <laughs> that whole connection because we had been friends online for a very long time um I don't think that Jared and I met in person until like EYF yeah I think that's right several seven, years later or 18 or something like that. So yeah, yeah, several years later, we had both started our yarn companies in the meantime and things like that, doing our things. I was doing my thing in France and he was doing his thing in the US. And then we met at a festival I in love Edinburgh. That. Yeah. Really I, love cool. that. I love that. It's so it's such a global story. And, and I can picture, again, because both of your brands are very image heavy, right? Because again, mm -hmm. particularly in the social media world, you kind of fall in love with the image before you actually touch and see, and so it's so important to have that. But Amy, you kind of led, you know, the whole French New, uh, New York thing. And so let's talk a little bit about the process. What was that like for a French yarn company and an American yarn yarn company or, or brands to work? work uh, talk about that a little bit. Uh, Amy, first. Well, um, it's... Having a company in France, I always had to kind of watch what everyone was doing from the internet, you know, like from from what was going on in the United States. I wasn't able to attend any trade shows in the U.S. just because it didn't make any sense to me. So I would pay attention to what was going on on the blogs and then Ravelry come around. I read on the forums and then Instagram came around and I would see the photos and things like that. And by this time, Jared had started his company and I had seen him making his yarn moved from. Because, Jared, didn't you move from the East Coast to the West Coast at some point? Yeah, 2015, moved from Brooklyn to Portland, which is where yeah. I am now. Yeah. yeah. Yes, and that was the year that I started my yarn company. And he had already been making yarn um, for several years before that. I was even selling it in my cafe in mm -hmm. Paris yeah. before I started my yarn brand. And so I had an affinity for Brooklyn Tweed. And then... Um, how we came together to collaborate on this was I started working on this collaborative book called Neons and Neutrals, which came out earlier this year. And I was all about wanting to bring together different yarn companies into one book. And we're all going to collaborate together. And that's and I knew back in my mind, I was like, I was thinking about all the yarn brands that I used to carry in my cafe. And so I immediately went towards those. Some of them don't exist anymore. Um, but Brooklyn Teed was there. And I was like, I have to have something in Brooklyn Tweed. And so that's kind of how our companies kind of came together working um, last year. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, we have, we'd have, we'd be remiss if we didn't mention Luigi in the process. <laughs> My husband, Luigi is also um, co-owner and he's the, the businessman uh, Brooklyn behind Brooklyn Tweed. And he is um, a very, community connection oriented person very much um gets his joy from building relationships and um i'm i also love building relationships but i'm i'm a little bit more of a solo player i like to be home in my quiet studio working away um and so he has really been a big part of sort of thinking who's out there in the industry that we really connect mm. with, shares our values, um, who can we su help, su how can we be mutually I love that. supportive? And I think that that's really one of the big connections that we've had with you, Amy, is that we both really kind of look at the industry more as like, how can we all work together versus your company versus my company mm. and, and yeah. all of that. And 
Um, so even though we've known each other a long time, we got a chance to get more time together and get to know each other more in the last six months as we've been working on this project. And it's been really great and also really nice for us. Sometimes it kind of feels lonely doing what we do. Uh, not a lot of people do it. And um, I think as any small business owner has just tons of challenges. I we say our job is problem solving number one. It's like all we all we do. <laughs> and so um, uh, Amy and Julian were in Portland a few months ago, and we sat down for dinner at one of our favorite restaurants here. And just it was so nice to talk shop with people who kind of have a very similar yeah. existence, even though it's in Paris. I feel like the problems, the joys, the challenges, the the kind of day-to-day -day lifestyle stuff. It was just so, ah, uh, it feels so good to have someone who really understands it from the inside and kind of help, help me realize, yeah, it really does make a difference to have, you know, those kinds of uh, community connections. Absolutely. I love that. I, I love hearing the story, right? And so you, you touched on it a, a little bit, right? So you both were separately, you were blogging, Jared and Amy, you you were running your, your your tea shop, which I had the pleasure of visiting and will always hold near and dear in my heart and one of my favorite Paris experiences. Um, but then you decided to shift and move into, into the actual creating a yarn brand. Can you talk a little bit more about what was it that made you actually say, okay, I'm gonna go from blogger to yarn brand, right? So Jared, I'd love to hear from you. And then Amy, yeah. you know, that's going to be yarn to shop. I'd love to hear about that. So Jared, if you can go first. Yeah, I think that every step of my career, even before the yarn, when I was starting my blog or starting to experiment with designing for hand knitters, was just, uh, I'm a big learner. I love learning. I'm always, you know, I love I do. I have a lot of hobbies, a lot of creative pursuits outside of the ones that people know me for in my career. Um, and I think learning and kind of expanding knowledge and uh, creative skills has always been something that I've really loved to do. So it, I never really had that moment of looking way out and saying, hey, I want to be a business owner in the hand knitting industry. But I definitely have a chain of so many moments where I thought I could do that. I'm going to learn how. I want to try it and and just see what happens. Um, and and you know, kind of moving forward with an open, exploratory energy is is where I feel most comfortable and and most expanded and full. And you know, I feel very lucky to have been rewarded in the things that I've done in the in the hand knitting world because they've all been very authentically connected to my own process as a creative and um, as a person. So I think it's kind of more of that one foot in front of the other. And there was a point, you know, after starting the business and sort of understanding, hey, this is something that if with the right level of commitment could, you know, be moved forward in a in a more mindful, intentional way and, and definitely hit that point a few years in. But even the first few years of doing Brooklyn Tweed, the yarn company, um, I was really pretty, I don't know, naive and, and um, uh, what's the word? I guess just not really focused on how do I build this as a business, more focused on how can I keep this vehicle moving forward as a way to pour my creativity into it through my design work, through my photography, things that I just wanted to be doing for my work. Um, so it, it, it definitely feels very like a very organic, you know, at this point, starting the blog almost 20 years ago, 18 years ago, which is really unbelievable. It does not feel that long, um, but also there's been so many you know, I've grown so much as a person during that time. I mean, I look back at myself then and I just see someone, I just didn't feel like I knew myself at all. <laughs> and I think uh, running a small business and, and being, for me, being somehow under scrutiny from the public or kind of having attention on me has been a big mm -hmm. growing edge for me in my life because I've always sort of been a fly under the radar kind of person, more comfortable doing that. And um, so yeah, so it's brought a lot of a lot of growth, a lot of challenges for me actually personally to be 
doing something in this way and also a lot of rewards too i i don't like to um promote the narrative that we so often hear in the culture of like glorifying the entrepreneur and like mm -hmm. that's the best possible thing you could ever do and that that's the dream job that everyone wants like there's some really great amazing parts and the freedom of it is the big like the really big motivator for me of being able mm -hmm. to make the moves that I want to make when I want to make them um, like doing a collaboration together you know that felt really right and felt I felt the sparks and so yeah. we moved, we were I was able to say yes let's do that and so that kind of freedom is what really motivates me but it's been a challenging road for me as well in many ways and um and so yeah i, I just like to kind of bring both of those stories forward because yeah. i do kind of you know we sort of live in this culture that like fetishizes the idea of like the self-made person and um that everybody feels like they should be trying to do that and i i tell people more like really know what you want and it's okay if that's not what you want and yeah, it's also yeah. okay if you start if you start doing that and you get into it and you're like that's not actually yeah. making me it's feel so good cool. you know and so Evolution. i've had to yeah i've had to find i've had to modulate and adjust many many times on the journey to and be honest with myself and got to a point where say, hey, everybody's looking at this thing and saying, wow, that's so amazing. And I'm sitting here thinking, ah, this isn't feeling right for me. This isn't exactly fitting for me yet. I'm gonna make a change to see if this will fit better and see mm -hmm. if this will fit better. And that was really hard for me at the beginning. Um, it's a lot easier for me now. I'm, I'm just more comfortable, way more self-compassionate person than mm -hmm. I've ever been before. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I think that's helped me and continues to help me grow and set the boundaries that I need to keep sustaining the energy that you need to do this work, which uh, especially you, Amy, you travel so much and you're out in the public oh, eye so much that I really <coughs> admire, you know, your energy and your commitment to that because it's very, it's very, very difficult. Absolutely. Um, everything that Jared just said almost mirrors exactly my experience as well. Um, the growth for La Bienie May came organically from working at <clears throat> in my cafe. And when I worked in my cafe, I needed that yarn, that special yarn to sell in my cafe. That's what sparked this idea to start La Bienie May. Um, I tell people, they ask me like often, like, did you think that this is where you would be today? And I said, no, like I said earlier, I thought that I would just be selling a basket of my yarn in, the, <clears throat> in my cafe. But as always, I, and something that I learned very clearly during the pandemic is I'm really good at pivoting. And I guess I've just been pivoting nonstop yes. <laughs> yes. as I go through my company. And like yes. Jared said, That's like some pivot. new opportunity presents itself. And I said, oh, I, I'm going to try because I love to try new things, you know, and mm -hmm. if I fail, then I can say like, okay, I'm not going to do this. So mm -hmm. like coming along and being a guest editor for Pom Pom Magazine, was something that was proposed to me during the pandemic. I had never done that before. I was like, I had never had thoughts of working in publishing or doing anything like that. Guest editing, I was like, mm, I don't know, never thought to do it. But I was like, why not? Let's try it's something new. And then it turned into this like idea of like, maybe I could make my own books too. And yeah. so that's just kind of like, as you said, I grow, grew organically from the moment that I started my yarn company and then grew the business as well. A lot of my motivations for our changes and our growth was for comfort for my employees as well. I wanted to make a workplace that was comfortable for people because it's hard work doing the kind of um, dying that we do. You know, we 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 are manual. We're doing manual work. You know, and so a lot of the motivation in the early early years of La Bene May was to be like, okay, I need to keep investing in my company so that I can improve the work environment for. Mm -hmm people who work with me because I knew in the long term, I wouldn't be able to keep doing what I'm doing if the people working with me were not comfortable. Right. Um, and so we've, I've been able to grow in a way that I'm pretty proud of the, the team that I've built that works with me. And that really motivates me every day to come to work. Oh, and do what I I do. Um, Jared, you mentioned how I'm traveling a lot. I love selling. My first job, other than being a babysitter, was being a sales girl. And I mm -hmm. love talking to people and I love selling. And so if especially if I'm selling a product and I have sold so many weird things in my life, I used to sell like 
truck parts for like, <laughs> I like, like industrial. Yeah. And in I French. would never have guessed that. <laughs> <laughs> it was a job that I had right when I graduated from university. And I have sold like handbags. I have sold Girl Scout cookies. I have sold makeup, you know, and if I'm like behind a product, I can sell it. And I love yarn. I That's love so knitting. Cool. And so for me, another thing that like one of my job titles is, you know, creative director of La Vienne May. I say I am the traveling saleswoman of La Vienne May <laughs> as well. I absolutely yeah. love going to these festivals and seeing people and doing trunk shows and being able to interact. And I draw a lot of creativity from these interactions. Mm -hmm. um, the pandemic was this moment of my lowest creativity because mm -hmm. I wasn't able to travel. I wasn't okay. able to see people. So we started doing all these virtual events and then I had the idea for the collaborative book, Neons and Neutrals. And I said, what if I like try to collaborate with all these designers and we use a little bit of my yarn, but I want to use everyone else's yarn too, because you know, I love knitting with everyone's yarn. If you looked in my stash, it's huge, you know, and I've got everyone's mm -hmm. yarn in there. And I remember having a conversation with a friend saying like, I love knitting with LBA, but for me, it feels like work sometimes. And so mm. like when I want to get mm. inspiration, oh, I'll I like that. Yarn yeah. and sit there and watch and and knit with that and so that's kind of what happened during neons and neutrals um and again like i don't know where we're going with this i was just saying that i'm just growing organically as yeah. i go with lba and that's how this um collaboration with brooklyn tweed came about i knew that i wanted to feature it in my book and i had written to luigi and i had asked like i'm interested in putting your yarn in my book and he had just mentioned that we are releasing this new yarn called Imbu. I think Imbu had just released, like you guys had not, yeah. it wasn't even available for wholesale. And I said, can I get some? Can you send me some? Because I just knew, like when I heard the specs of the yarn, I was like, this is incredible. Mm -hmm. When it arrived, there was one color that was really lightweight. It was like crep. I think it's your lightest yep. color weight. I took it to the dye studio and I was like, let's dye this. Let's see what happens. I didn't, I just wanted to see. And mm -hmm. when I dyed it, that was what locked it in that I, that I wanted to start this collaboration. And I wrote to Brooklyn Tweed immediately and said, hey, what do you guys think if I dyed on this base? And it was such an exciting time because um, at that time I had been in touch with Luigi um, for that. Yeah. And we had just worked together on that. And I felt like it went really fast. <laughs> I don't know if that felt like that for you too, Jared. Yeah, but also that's normal, I think, for for Luigi and I when when there's that like that mm -hmm. gut, you know, the connection. Gut, immediately. We're, just, we're just ready. Let's just do it. We're, let's go. Right. We don't spend a lot of time second guessing that, and learned over the years, I think, to trust that feeling, and it's, yeah. it's, it often bears good results. Yeah. Yeah. Love I love that. I love that. Well, you know what? We've been t talking about, you know, the meet cue, the uh, collaboration, like like everything is just so, so wonderful. Um, let's jump into some of the patterns. And so you mentioned already, Amy, uh, neons and, and, and neutrals. And I can see in back of you the Brienne, the cardigan and the cowl. So, so talk to me about how did you choose this particular yarn to feature for that? pattern? Well, I worked with Brian Moody um, for <clears throat> Neons and Neutrals, and she had picked um, Corey Worsted for the first sample. So that's the sample that's on Taylor. Okay. And okay. Um, I knew that I wanted to find a secondary yarn that was in the realm of the same gauge. Um, and that's where I thought that it would be great to have the second sample done in Brooklyn Tweed. And also the colors were very different than mm -hmm. what um, I was dying on La Bienne Aimée. And so that's kind of how I chose. I knew that I wanted the Brooklyn Tweed to be for a garment and all the mm -hmm. other garments in the book didn't really fit into, into the same gauge for imbue. So it was like by a process of elimination that this is the one that I was going towards. Okay. And so that's how we chose to use those two colors that are featured on Usra um, for Brienne, Warbler and Orchid. I love it, I love it. Let's, you know what, let's stay with the conversation of color. Colors and you both are such color artists, and you your palettes are incredible. So let's talk about the palettes. And so, Jared, let's talk about the Brooklyn Tweed Imbue palette. And so, how did you develop this particular set of, of, of a spectrum of, of colors? Yeah. 
Well, Imbue is a first yarn. So all of our yarns are sourced and spun in the U.S. So right away, that's a like sort of a teeny tiny little um, limitation box since 95 plus percent of the yarn in the world is not made in the U.S. <laughs> so we, you know, our what our life as a yarn company looks like is very different than what a lot of other manufacturer or you know companies that are working with manufacturers look like in that we pretty much for every yarn that we have in our line we build a supply chain from scratch ourselves so we're finding the fiber mm -hmm. source in the western states we're looking for a spinner who can work with that we're looking for a dyer we're, we're looking for people who can finish the skeins and so on all the steps of the process and there's really not that many, you know, there's, a, there's, there's less options in the States, significantly less than there were when I started this. Mm -hmm. um, and so we are also sort of known for our heathers. Heathers are really mm -hmm. my, my yarn and color passion. That's what I started with. That's sort of how I built the brand. And um, we've never been able, until in Butte, we had never really found a way to make tethered yarn in a worsted spinning process, which mm -hmm. is the smooth, smoother yarns, um, right. finer kind of the uh, the analogy of like spaghetti noodles being plied together versus mm -hmm. like a tumbleweed for a woolen spun. Okay. And you really okay. associate woolen spun yarns with heathers. Those are kind of the Scottish classic yarns that we all know and love from um, from the UK. And those are some kind of more of the style of the yarns that I started Brooklyn Tweed with. So we, um, through our growing network of manufacturers in the States, we figured out a way to make a worsted spun heather. And that was kind of like my self challenge when we were coming up with Imbue. And because mm -hmm. Imbue is five ply, which is a, also sort of rare for what we can do here in the States. Usually it's four or less. We found a mill that could spin more than that. Mm -hmm. And uh, five ply is a really durable, super round, springy construction. So we knew it was a great opportunity to use some of the finer micron merino that we are able to source here in the States. So we sourced a 20.5 micron merino. Merino is amazing for hand dyeing as well. Um, yes. As many hand dyers know, it just takes the color with this beautiful saturation. It has kind of like a, almost like a pearlescent finish. It has this Absolutely. little bit of sheen. Um, we have yarn colors that we dye in multiple lines. And whenever we dye it on Merino, I'm like, this is just glowing from the inside yeah. out. It kind of yeah. has this luminosity yeah. to it. And so when knowing Amy's color aesthetic and, and knowing that she responded to Imbue, especially because Imbue is such a dark palette, as you can see from the slide, mm -hmm. um, like it was the perfect, and a small palette too. Our other lines are like 36 colors. Uh, right, due to right. the minimums at the mill, we needed to start with a 12 color palette, which is so hard for me. <laughs> I agonize. <laughs> Limiting yourself. There's, I have at, at Brooklyn Tweed have a board of like 40 different heathers that were developed during the process right. of making imbue. And, and some of them we're going to be um, bringing into the line this year, adding some more colors. But um, to okay. choose the, the 12 is just, it just, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's always a heartbreak, a small death for me to, to cut, yeah. cut a lot of those beautiful colors. Thinking you're your favorite as, child. <laughs> yeah. As far as my color aesthetic, you know, you, you look at one line at Brooklyn Tweed, you'll see a lot of similarity across all mm -hmm. of them. I'm a nature lover. I love being out in nature and that's where I see color. And that's how I, that's why I respond to Heather's um, because they're so complex and they are more like what you see in nature. You don't see one leaf that's a solid color. You see mm -hmm. 10 shades of yellow, flecks of red. Mm -hmm. We were out yesterday uh, in the woods for a photo shoot and it was just all the trees were yellow and white birch wood. And I was just seeing mm -hmm. the most amazing colors all around and thinking like, how do you, how can you, how, how, how to translate this in, into yarn? It, it's never a full translation, obviously, but um, that's definitely where I sort of live in my color world is out in the natural world and kind of always trying to see how, how those colors can be dialogued with in, man and woman made things. <laughs> mm, well, now, now let's take a look at Amy's 
color yeah. palette, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I think, again, I mean, Same immediately, yarn, two different personalities. we see a difference, <laughs> right? You see? This, you know, this expresses our personalities perfectly. <laughs> perfectly, exactly. So anyway, I mean, look at, our, look at our backgrounds. Colors. Look at our backgrounds. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you, you both clearly stay on brand, right? So I love that. So Amy, talk, talk to us about the uh, clearly more than 12. And yeah, so and we're developing we more almost every day. So like we have a few more that will be coming out very soon. Um, <laughs> when I initially started dyeing on Imbue, the very first color I dyed was that light purple down at the very bottom of the circle. Mm. Um, okay. Because I just, for some reason, knew I needed that lavender. And it's a color that I knew that Jared did not have in his palette. And so when I started developing the LBA colors, I definitely wasn't going to develop a color that already exists on BT Imbue. My optic was also, I had in mind the Brienne cardigan, neons and neutrals. I'm very much thinking like, what neons can balance with this neutral, what neutral can balance this neon and things like that. And so I went on to develop colors that I thought were complementary with the colors that Jared had already developed in BT mm -hmm. Imbue. Um, if we go to the next slide, I we made a color ring with our, both of our colors put together. Which and is so just in so my mind, <laughs> yeah. So in my mind, this is how I was doing it. I, I had yeah. all one of each of the BT Imbue colors up in my office and I would go and be like, okay, what do I want in it with this color? I need this LBA color. And so then I would go and develop that. Um, what was super exciting about Imbue, though, is I'm, I'm able to achieve speckling on this base, which is not always easy to do on non-superwash yarns. The five-ply mm. construction really adapts itself to being able to make these really beautiful speckled colorways. So we do have a few of these like lighter speckled colorways, but I am going to be developing some darker ones, too, okay. here very soon. So those will be coming out soon. But yeah, so this is like, in my mind, how I imagined the color wheel of imbue integrating jared's colors and my colors and obviously i always think in rainbow so i always yes. want to be able to arrange mm -hmm. the colors into a rainbow and i feel like i i feel like we're really we're really close to that it. now i think mm -hmm. you did and, and and i love you know, the i love the any yarn line where you can get a heather a solid a semi-solid and a speckle like all together i think it's so beautiful to mix all of those things together too with the same base it's so rare to be able to do that especially with heathers and hand dyes those are you know usually living in separate worlds so we i just love this picture <laughs> It makes me so happy. <laughs> me too. It yeah. makes me very happy. Uh, that was the goal and end is I wanted to be able to knit one color of BT um, imbue with one color of LBA imbue mm -hmm. um, and mix mm -hmm. and match together. Collaboration. Yeah. It, yes. It, it continues. So you both talked about the, uh, the the production. And again, I'm I'm holding my, my additional skein, which is probably going to be made into a hat, right? Maybe. I have so many options. And so we talked <laughs> about that, you know, the five ply constructions. And so as you were, were, were talking, I'm Jared, I can definitely see that. And so um, I'm Amy, how is dyeing on this different from dyeing on the, the, the types of yarn that you typically use for, for LBA? Well, when LBA started, I started out with super washing irons because that was what was available to me on the market. I hadn't start, I had not started custom spinning my own bases yet. Mm -hmm. um, I started to, I've always loved non super wash yarns though. I want to, I want to preface that like my favorite yarn at the time when I started LBA was like Jameson's of Shetland. You know, I love, <laughs> yeah. So I love those like really heathered woolly wools. Yeah. Um, and so, but I knew hand dyeing, because I did try experimenting by hand dyeing on natural yarns. And I was like, this isn't working. This isn't working. Um, once I started developing my own bases um, and understanding the construction, like I did not come to hand spinning until like literally this year of my life. Mm. I studied construction just very academically um, and also just like kind of playing around and, and learning from experts who would teach me things. And then once I started spinning, I realized like, oh, I understand what all these plies can do when, I, when I'm going to dye them. I knew basically based on a two-ply, three-ply, but when I got imbue in my hand and I saw those five plies, first thing I do with the yarn is I, de I deconstruct it 
and I take it apart and I look at it and I, I and I play with it. And I just knew I was like, I had to get this in the dye pots because I had never dyed anything like that before. And I wanted to see, I knew in my mind how those five plies were going to play together once they were dyed, but I couldn't tell you, like Jared talked about, the luminosity that comes off of this. Mm -hmm. Right. Dye. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, yeah. So I really Amy, love that. Um what you, you were saying it was hard to dye natural yarns. What's the, is it more of like a bleed situation yes. or is it just that the colors don't fully it saturate depends on the, the fibers. Way At the time I was, I was dying a lot of like BFL, like Blueface Lester or Wensleydale mixes. And also it was how the, the plying was happening as well. If the mm -hmm. plies were too loose, if there was two ply, three ply, it channels the color in a very different way than mm. a three ply high twist. Yeah, um, yeah. I, we do have, I, I do have successful collaborations of making like speckled colorways on three ply yarns and four ply yarns. And mm -hmm. so the more the plies I'm learning, the easier it is to do more fun hand dyeing techniques um, on them. Cool. Yeah. Makes yeah. sense. I just, I never knew that. So thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and you, and I, I did have a question on, on, on how was it to, to dye the yarn, but you kind of answered that. Um, <laughs> Jared, you touched on it a little bit, but let's. I, I want to make sure when you talk about the production of the yarn, um, mm -hmm. we'd love to know in the development of Imbue, how different or, or or how did you mix your yarn production methods? Because again, this yeah. is very different from typical uh, Brooklyn tweed. Yeah. So the big the big difference for the production was how the dyed yarn gets processed for the spinning. So when you're working with a heathered yarn, mm -hmm. you dye a giant batch of raw scoured, but raw wool all at once in a big batch. So it looks like a giant, you know, compressed thing of cotton candy, for example. And if you get 10, 15 of those bright solids, every heather you see every heather yarn is a recipe of combinations of those solids so for an orange uh, you might have 30 percent of the solid orange 10 percent red 10 percent yellow 20 percent brown 20 percent black and so forth to make something mm. more rusty rustic a uh, little more nuanced color and so usually woolen spun is what is made with heathers because that that wool that's in that um in that format of dyed mm -hmm. raw wool goes right into a woolen spun process where the wool doesn't need to be carded mm -hmm. uh, and lined up together it's just you want it to be kind of jumbled and all picked together so we didn't have anyone who could take the dyed wool the raw wool Mm -hmm. and spin it in the worsted process. There's like a missing step there that would need the wool after it's dyed to be combed and prepped for worsted spinning. So we found uh, a mill that would, they would spin it, but they also needed to open up that fiber after it was dyed and cart it into, um, so it's like adding two additional steps. You're still mixing the heather, but once the heather is mixed, then you're reprocessing it. They call it opening the fiber, but you're reprocessing it so that the worsted spinning process can then happen. So what was really fascinating for me too, is to sort of see, I'm so used to spinning heathers in the woolen spun style, which usually leaves more like a piecier finish to the wool. It doesn't get fully blended together. So you get more flex neps, little wisps of a color here and there. And with imbue, it's mixed more. So it's it's a it's a more subtle heather. You still are getting little kind of tweedy nips in some of the colors, but for the most part, it's a it looks. If you're mixing paint, it was just like you kept mixing the paint longer yeah. until it it started getting closer to a solid. So it kind of falls in the okay. space between the woolen spun heathers that we have, like shelter and loft and mm -hmm. a true solid yarn. It's kind of like a refined heather is sort of how I think about it. Oh, like this is this is like a class. I'm 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 so fascinated. <laughs> how, class of you know, it's a master class from someone who said, you know, I'm just gonna blog and take pictures. And someone who's like, I'm gonna have a, a basket of yarn in my you, you both sound like clearly and it makes sense, mm -hmm. right? Uh master uh dyers as well. Mm -hmm. And so um, you know, this day is special because we are kicking off our, our knit along. 
And so super yeah. excited again. So I'm going to, I'm going to be a twofer. So I'm going to, so I did my one and I'm definitely going to do another. So I'd love some inspiration. So can we show a couple mm -hmm. of the, the patterns that we're thinking would make it. And so could either of you talk a little bit about each, each, each pattern? So Amy, do you want to speak a little bit about Sparklewood? Sparkwood. 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 <laughs> so I think Sparkwood is a new pattern. I think Jared actually could probably talk about this better okay. than me. Mm -hmm. This came out right when our collaboration started. Is that correct? Yeah, this is a pattern by one of our team members at Brooklyn Tweed. Ah, Liz. Okay. She's our knit, knit, knitwear coordinator. And we, at the time, we were designing for a different yarn called Tones that has tone pairs. So every color has like a light, bright version and a little darker, mm -hmm. heathery version. And we were just thinking, kind of spitballing, like what, what are ways we could combine these two things? And um, Liz and I are a lover of a peaked watch cap. <laughs> and so we were thinking, what about like one tone for the brim and one tone for the top? They're still the same color, but you get a little bit of that play. So when we started thinking about patterns for the Imbue collab, we were looking at our archive for things that combine color in worsted weight patterns that combine color and also knit along patterns so things that were smaller and faster. And so we knit two samples sort of playing off of the two, like the golds and the lavenders yeah. of the two palettes. So on the left side, you see Amy's color as the main color of the hat, that's mm -hmm. the brighter gold, the, uh, that's goldenrod. And orchid is our heathered sort of purple. And then mm -hmm. the other one on the right is a, that brighter, that, that anemone color, that was the first color that you dyed. <laughs> And then yeah. Warbler, my personal favorite um, imbue color, Heather color is the, the sort of Heather gold. So we just thought it'd be fun to sort of play around with these two things like and them. put them together. But um, the number of combinations is sort of mind numbing with all of the colors in that beautiful circle. So we, we kept it pretty tight on this <laughs> one, um, just to sort of show the, the yeah. play of the two, the two companies takes on the yarn. Yeah, I like it. Well, let's 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 jump into more color. So this color work, how Jared is incredible. I'm like, I'm, I, I'm, I'm stuck. Like every time I see something, I'm like, okay, this is what I'm gonna make. Nope, this is what I'm gonna make. So let's talk about <laughs> let's talk about this first co color work, how. Yeah, yeah. A couple years ago, we were working on designing some patterns for beginners or kind of less. I think one of the things about Brooklyn Tweed over the years is that so many people look at what we do as a sort of aspirational they love to see it mm -hmm. they they are inspired by the sort of the whole brand fantasy of it but they might feel like oh i don't know that might be a little more advanced for me even though we work really hard to make the pattern super thorough and educational i think just the presentation level often can intimidate people so we we have a line called bt by brooklyn tweed which is four page simple patterns um, and sort of my concept was like, how do you get something like that first project for a certain kind of knitting? And so that's why we call this the first color work cowl, because you get to play with four colors, which is, is fun no matter what. Yeah. But all the motifs, the design kind of prompt for me was the easiest possible stranding without it looking boring. So every two color row in the pattern, no matter where you're at, is just alternating one by one. Yeah. That was my only kind of limitation yeah, here. Just how, how do you play one by one? Because that's the, the shortest float you could possibly have. I'm thinking the and floats. So, <laughs> yeah. And so tensioning that is less uh, difficult and mm. kind of hopefully a higher result of success for the fabric being nice and even. Um, so yeah, so we knit one, this was knit by one of our team members, Mary, and she picked out two imbue Amy colors and two imbue Jared colors and put them together. And what I think is so fascinating about this and every other color work pattern in the world is just how different, like I'm looking at Amy's that she just put on, same yeah, pattern, incredible. everything's the yeah. same, yarn's the same, and it looks like a totally different pattern because I of the way you're I only wanted to use three colors value. on this, so yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And I, like, I have so to say, I picked this pattern 
because I was traveling and I wanted to, I was traveling to Portland actually. And I wanted to have something that was a travel pattern. And yeah. I know that these patterns are like for maybe more beginner knitters, but it's also a super relaxing knit for advanced knitters yeah. as well. Cause yeah. you can memorize the chart really easily. And I would just sit there and just go, 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 go. And it was totally. just like this kind of meditative, relaxing knit. And I loved it. Yep. And I opted to use three colors because I only wanted to put yellow, Brick Road and Floor Morganite in there because that was like my obsession colors at the moment. And I knew having this dark blue of Boro would just like really mm -hmm. push it forward. Yeah. So, yeah. I love it. I love Super it. cool. Great, great. So many options for people to, to choose from. So let's talk about the one we talked about earlier. Let's go back to the Brienne. Um, this beautiful, beautiful. And, they, you know, I'm looking at the, the arm detail, the double cuff. Uh, Love this one, Amy. So I knew that this combination was going to happen. I was, I mean, I was in, and I still am in my pink and yellow <laughs> moment. I, think I was going to say that. You know? when you said before. <laughs> yes. And I knew that yes. I wanted to have a Brienne in Floor Morganite and Yellow Brick Road. And so as soon as we were able to start production dyeing on Imbue, I had the sample um, made up. Um, I just... I don't know. I just love these two colors together. And I, the construction, um, as you can see, it, it's like from sleeve to sleeve. So it's super fun to knit. So this is a great pattern for this knit along as well, because it's a, you start with the sleeves and you have no sleeve Island. So you're just going to like, yeah, you know, different. start off like that. And it's the fun part too, of knitting the double cuff. And I feel like that this is a really adventurous knit for somebody who might be a beginner knitter, but also something super fun for an advanced knitter mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. And so I think that this could be a really fun sweater to start for the knit along. I like it. Yeah. I like it. Okay. And there it is in the, uh, the, a, a combination of colors. It, it looks complete. It's, if it's possible, it looks completely different. It, it does. We used a speckled colorway called Heliodor right. for the pop. And okay. Bora, which is the dark blue that I used in my cowl here. Um, yes. This too was, I knew I wanted to do a super dark Brooklyn tweed color to be held with one of the lightest colors that we dye on LBA Imbue. And I just love mm -hmm. how it came together. So yeah, no. it's like Great a classic job. navy and white, nice. but it's not white. You no. Can right, right. It's the plan. Cool. <laughs> I love it. All right, <laughs> let's move on to the, to the Romy. No, Romney, mm -hmm. Romney, purchase. Romney. This is beautiful. This is so simple. It's one of, and speaking of therapy knitting, mm -hmm. this is like the best travel project. This is a, so funny. I totally forgot about this pattern. This is something that I knit like more than 15 years ago with some of my hand spun. Romney, which is a, a breed of wool. And Liz, our, our network coordinator, when she was looking through the archive, she was just looking for fun things for the mid along and, and easy, accessible projects and pulled this out of the ancient history category and knit one of these just to put three colors together. And it was so nice and a fun way to just change it up. But the, you know, Imbue's five ply is so squishy. And so even super mm -hmm. simple, like this modified garter stitch with the little ridges just like when you put that around your neck it just has this amazing amazing squish so this is uh one of those kind of like yeah i call them therapy projects it just feels mm -hmm. good in the hand you don't have to think too hard and when you have a really beautiful mm -hmm. yarn to play with you just get to appreciate it yeah i like that, love that. all right and then let's look at and more it's, it's so a, um the one other thing about the, the shawl is that it's, it's a top down. So you just knit it as long as you want until it's the size that you mm -hmm. want. You don't have oh, to. Oh, uh, I like that. You no, know, you, you no. could have stopped after just the, the light cream color and it would have been more like a handkerchief or you could stop after the mid gray and it would be a small shawl or keep going, mm -hmm. make it really big. So it's just super, it's great too if you have a limited amount of yarn and you just want to use it all up. Um, just like when you're getting close to the end weigh your ball mm -hmm. of yarn and then knit one row and figure out I've got three rows left. I better bind off in that time and I'll use up all my yarn. Oh, that's great. I love it. Love it. Okay. So now we're going to look at Morse by Michelle Mann. I love this one too. So again, I, mm -hmm. I, again, as you can see, I'm in, I can't make, can't make up my mind because they're all so great, but let's talk about this. This, The yeah. colors here are fabulous. I, I'm laughing because we photographed this 
less than 24 hours ago. <laughs> Just got it right out of the camera and sent it over for this chat. Um, this is so funny. It looks like a completely different pattern than what it was when we released it several years ago because we knitted in basically black and white. So it was yeah. really graphic, very classic. Yeah. Um, and our, our yarn production coordinator, Maggie, when we got the LBA scans at Brooklyn Tweed, it was just sort of like a joyful free for all in the office of people saying like, I want to knit this, I want to knit that. So another <laughs> one of our um, team members, Maggie, knit this towel and she she wanted to knit with the, the super bright colors. I love that bright yellow so much. I love it. Um, and so she was knitting this and I'm like, I see, you know, you, you change colors and you see something completely differently. Uh, also to make the banded patterns different colors. Mm -hmm. It's more like an all over feel when it's just two colors. It feels kind of more like a brocade pattern or something. And now it feels very much like I can see and appreciate those patterns individually. Um, and I like to the kind of like proportion of where that bright color falls. I do well. too. So I like that. Really fun. I like that. I love that. Super Wonderful. Easy. And my contribution. Yeah. So you know, this was in my queue for quite some time now, and I've always mm -hmm. wanted. I, again, I love cows. Cows are so so perfect yeah. because for for me, you can wear them with with your coat. But like if it's cold in the office or wherever, just having the cow like yeah. like hug your neck, and this feels so great hugging mm -hmm. my neck. And if, and if I recall correctly, you can make three different sizes. So this plays yep. well. And so yeah, me it's a just circular. I did this one. <laughs> yeah, it's a circular cast on. There's the long version where you long enough where you could do a double wrap, short, me medium, and you've got the the full cowl version on, which is great for. Did you get that in two skeins? Is that two skein project? Oh, I did this in two skeins, right? And so. Yeah. Um, I, I followed the pattern. So this is what I was, you know, again, how much I enjoyed <laughs> knitting with, with this yarn because <laughs> the last, you know, the, the, the three parts of the pattern, the third piece is the stockinette for 20 rows. Clearly I have 30 plus rows here because I would knit <laughs> on Zoom calls and it just felt so <laughs> enjoyable and pleasurable to knit. Yeah. I was like, I can go another round. I can go another round. And I only oh, bound it off because I'm like, well, let me bound it off so I can have it off the needles for our call. But, um, I, mm -hmm. I loved it. I love. I love the volume and the proportion. I want one that I yeah. want to make that too. So yeah, I think this is this is a thing. great one. So you know what? What are you casting on for the for the uh, knit along? Well, I initially was going to do the spark wood hat. I can do two. I feel like I'm <laughs> going to cast on two, but I want a hat and cowl. I don't have a. I usually knit myself a cowl every winter, every season, and I haven't mm -hmm. knit my cowl this year. So I think I'm going to do. The same as yours and the sparkwood. So yeah, I love it. I love it. I think I'm gonna do the cowl too. I love it. I um, <laughs> can we do triplets? Also, I've always, I've always loved that pattern. It's so easy and also therapy knitting. Yes. Um, yeah, and it's it's nice when you have a special yarn too, just to like keep it in the most intimate place. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice. Well, oh my goodness, I feel like, you know, I can't believe how much time have we spent already. The time is going by so <laughs> fast, um, but I've learned so much. Again, I, I've known both of you for quite some time and I just love hearing your your full origin stories as well as your meet mm -hmm. cue and how this came to be, mm -hmm. which gives me an even greater appreciation for this yarn, like knowing the story, knowing how it came to be, knowing the dye um, process. And I can I, I, I can, can can validate that it is indeed squishy as well as um, luminous. Is that the term where it, it captures yeah. the weight? So uh, great job. I can't wait to see what other uh, um, colors are will be, will be joining the palette shortly but before we end is there any one little tip or or or, or, or comment you'd like to to add before let, we close let off? me add the details for the knit along so if you have yes. tuned in because we're like filming us we're going to put it yes. online um the, the knit along is going to start on november 3rd and go until um december 3rd so it's like one month it's mm -hmm. one month long one month. knit along it's happening on instagram it's happening with the hashtag imbue cal 
Um, we're going to announce this. I'm probably getting this all wrong, but um, we will put all the details in the um, in the messages below this video so that you can see that. And everything's happening on Instagram. So please tag us. We'll come and look at your knitting. I'm going to start working on mine too, and I'll be posting it along. And so that's kind of how the knit along is happening. It's very relaxed. Um, obviously, I think we are definitely opening a thread on our Ravelry group. Um, okay. as well for people who want to chit chat over on Ravelry too. So that's another place that you can go and say hi. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I think we'll also and have a thread on the BT Ravelry as well. So, so we can double dip. Sure check. Yeah. You can double dip for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, <laughs> am I misspeaking? Is I, I heard a rumor that there were going to be some, some prizes. Is this true? Yeah. Like okay. So I'm like looking at our copy? notes. I thought, yes. I thought I could be maybe it's wishful thinking. So we'll we'll come up with all the information, but there could definitely, be definitely, definitely there'll be prizes, and so we will post about that. So thanks for joining yeah. this video cast on party. Yes, and we're super excited to see your yeah. projects come to be. Absolutely. And um, thank you, Ready, Cecilia. Set, for look, right. Oh, it, it's, it's been my honor. Again, I, 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 I truly, I have so much respect for both of you. Again, I've been a big fan of 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 your brands, of the blog, and of the of the cafe since it's it's early days. And I believe I met you both in person for the well, I, well, I met you, Amy, at at your shop, but then we reconnected again at at EYF. So EYF holds a special bond for all of us. And so mm -hmm. um, I'm looking forward to when we can be uh, triplets in our matching cows. <laughs> I'll make that happen. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Well, thank you, um, everyone, for for joining and uh, ready, set, knit. Join us and yeah. share, please. Yeah. Thanks. Bye. Yeah. Bye, everyone. Bye, everybody. Thank you.